Hello everyone, this will be video two in our series on how to deal with currency conversions in DAX and Power BI. Uh, this one will be picking up where we left off on the previous video. So if you didn't check that one out, please do that first. Uh, if not, show the pick up what we're doing here. Uh, just a quick re recap of what's going on here. Um, we have data from the Worldwide Importers database from Microsoft. And we want to run a report based on different currencies. So I'm using sales in this example, but it could be anything. Um, so we have our currency rates table that has no missing days. Uh, that's very important right now. Now there's different ways of handling that and we'll cover those in future videos. But right now we're going to assume that there's no missing days in our currency rates table. So there's one date for every currency for every day. Uh, we also have a currency rate dimension table that has the different formatting that we will be using in this video. Uh, for me, I just use Excel. I just go into Excel and I wanna format a currency as a Euro and just see how it does it and grab that. So let me just show you exactly what I did for this one. So if we bring in Excel here, we have what, 14 or so, 19 tickers here. So in this, cur in this example, we have 19 different currencies we can convert to. So I want to use this format column to pick up whatever currency the user selects and format it appropriately. Now, since a lot of these are dollars, so see how the first couple are all, you know, dollar sign, pound, they're all the same format. So if I just select that, I really don't know what currency is supposed to be there. So I create this leading text to put in the front. So if someone chooses Australian dollar, I know it's, you know, AUD, and then the space and then the actual number formatted. And then the sort order, it doesn't need to be in there, but for my purposes, a lot of times my users are interested in USD first, so it doesn't want to be buried in the list. Uh, you could you know put any order if it's you know USD, then Euro, then pound, and then alphabetical. Uh, it's whatever your users would you know prefer, but not the end of the world if you don't have the sort order, but I highly recommend it. So if we import that into Power BI and it lands in here, we can bring that up, the dim currency rates. So here it is, it's in there. And then if you don't know the little trick to sort these instead of alphabetical, you highlight the column, or you click the column you wanna sort, and then you just change the column to sort order. And then in the slicer or whatnot, it will start with this order instead of alphabetical. So that's that's the main part we need to have here. We need to have this dimension table in there. And this ticker has to match the same ticker that's in your fact currency rates table. So if you just look at the tickers here, you know, AUD, Brazil, Canadian, all the way down to USD, and then in my dim currency rates table, boom, it's the same ones. Uh, if you have a currency that you select in this table that's not in the fact currency rates table, it won't it wear out because there's nothing to convert to. So it's important to have those two match up. And then we just take a look at our data model. It's a very basic one here, but a currency rates table is related to, or sorry, our dim currency rates table is related to our currency rates table based on that ticker. Okay, so pretty pretty easy there. I mean, nothing ground breaking there. But this, this format can change uh, based on however you want to do it. If you want less you know, places or whatnot, just come here, change it, and then import it back in. So if we go back to our example here. So where we picked off on the first video was that we had a sales measure that was converting all the sales based on the selected currency on that date. So right here, we got on 11-1-2015, 2005, excuse me, we have all the, the sales converted to US dollar, Australian dollar, Brazil, and then all the way, all way across. Uh, the total column where it doesn't make sense here because it's summing across and you really can't sum across currencies. But the column total down here does make sense because that's a total for that currency. Now, a user probably wouldn't select all these currencies. So if I just select a handful here, so Euro and US dollar, I get them there. But this this format is not very helpful. The users can get confused. It just doesn't look pretty. So what we want is whatever's chosen in this column, slicer, rows, whatever, we want this total sales measure to be formatted in the appropriate currency. 
format coming from this Excel file we imported in. So how does that, that look? So here's our final table. So what do you got going on here? We have two measures on here. Now you wouldn't only put the final one on there, but I wanna show the comparison here. So we have the converted sales and then the formatted sales. So obviously you can see here that the converted sales and the formatted sales, same numbers, but formatted sales is much more pleasing, it makes much more sense. So if you scroll, scroll all the way across, you see you know the pounds, they're correct, the euros are correct. So what's the trick, how do we do this? So first things first, we don't need those converted sales. That's kind of a, a measure that's just kind of bridging to a, the final measure. So let's just get rid of it here and just deal with this, this formatted sales measure. So let's bring up the DAX code and just take a look here. So I always like to define, define variables. I think that just makes things much easier to follow. And at times it could speed up the calculations um, depending on where you define them, how, long, how many times you're using them. But you want to define them once if you can and you reuse them. <clears throat> so right here, the first one, this measure the format. In this example, we only have one measure and that's the converted sales. Now, in coming videos, the cool thing is going to be is that this can be dynamic. So you can create a drop down or a slice or whatever that has sales, profit, you know, cost or whatever, and the user can choose whatever they want to see and it'll still convert it correctly and make it formatted nicely. So that's pretty cool. Uh, the currency selected here, it's just, uh, we used that earlier. All it is is a selected value coming from the dim currency uh, rates table. Uh, in my example, if there's an error, you know, too many chosen that it can't bring up two currencies at once, default to USD. This could be anything, it could just be an error, it could be you want know, a different currency, just as long as your users know what happens if they select too many currencies. Uh, this is only an issue if you don't put currencies anywhere on the table. So if I take off the full name here, which is coming from the dim currency rates table, and I select more than one here, it's defaulting the USD in the format sales because it's three currencies being fed into this table here and there's only one measure. So it doesn't know what to convert to. So the selected value errors out and gives me USD. So let's go ahead and clear that filter. And we'll put the currency full name back on the columns for this for the time being. So let's go back to his formatted sales. And then the formats are basically two lookups put together. I wanna look up what the format is and then I wanna look up if there's a leading text or not. So remember our format was coming from this Excel that we imported in this format, which you know it takes the same types of format that Excel does. And then the leading is the leading numbers here or letters here in case there is one. So we got two lookups here. So we want the format and the leading. And then we want to use this format function, feed it this me measure to format function, and then format it based on the lookup value here. So all it's doing is taking the converted sales that we tell it, finding what currency you want to convert it to, going to the currency rates table and finding that format. And then from there, it is taking that, and then we wanna look up the leading in case there is a leading text and we wanna add a uh, space in between the text and the, and the next formatting. And then all we do for the final one is smash those two together. So for, like, for something that has a leading text, let's go back to the table here. It looks up Australian dollar, it gets the format, formats it, finds if there's a leading text and smashes that together. And that's how you get that nice uh, formatted AU, uh, AUD dollar. So we go back to the measure here. Um, and the one last thing, we need to check for blanks because if there's no sales on that day, it's still gonna bring in that final format because we're bringing in the, the leading text. So what happens if I just get rid of that check and I just do final format? 
that's going to error out. Oops. Let's comment that one out. So we're not checking for blanks. Actually, that didn't, that didn't make a difference. Okay. So you don't need that, actually, huh? Learning on the fly here. That's good. Things aren't always crystal clear like that. So let's get rid of that one. We don't need the extra if in there. So all we need is a final format. That's perfect. That's even better. So we got the final format. And to me, that's that's a thing of beauty. Uh, we wrote one measure or one final measure with what, four or five intermediate measures. And these are done on the fly. So what happens if we just, you know, drag the full name and put that on rows? Look at that. We have total sales formatted in this currency. How cool is that? And then you could drill down. Let's, let's do it one that's not. Let's do a euro here. And those are all your euro sales. All with one little formatting measure and some data modeling. So you don't have to keep writing. What do we have? 19. How many of these do we have? We have what? 19 currencies. You don't need 19 formatted sales measures a that would be impossible to keep met to manage and it, it would just be slow and, and the whole thing it, I, to me this is you know you write it once and then you can define it any which way you want so we put those back on columns now we just get rid of it remember what's going to happen if we get rid of this it's going to default to usd now you might want to have like a text box up here or some sort of warning to the user but you know what? Maybe you don't even need that because this is formatted. So it, without even knowing that's happening, you know that's USD. It all, it all depends on how your users know how to use this or how you think they would want to deal with quote unquote errors. Let's see, you know, Danish Krona, Hong Kong dollar. Oh, see, okay, this is good. We do need to deal with that is blank. I knew there. So let's check the is blank again. So what's happening is there's no sales on the second, but this leading text is still coming through. So let's get rid of that. So let's do var. Check for blank. For blank. So we do an if is blank we're going to check the measure to format if that's blank oh if not is blank then we want to return to measure to format and then we want to return here and then we want to check for blank Hopefully that will work. And there it goes. Actually, there's a small error that I just realized that what I did here. So I check for the blank. I select a measure to format, which isn't giving me the leading text anymore because I grabbed the wrong one. I want this final format. Let's do final format, which has the leading text. And hopefully, yeah, okay, it's back in there now. All right, that's real, that's real world stuff. I mean, see a lot of these videos out there that everything's perfect and done, you know, with one take, and that's just not it. Um, so I hope this one. See, we grabbed the three again, and still giving you euros dollar, so that's good stuff. But yeah, I mean that. So now, now this final format sales measure is correct. Um, there's just a couple, you know, lookups and harvesting different user selections and some Excel and some data modeling and put it all together and you got some nicely formatted currency uh, sales. Uh, like I said, in future videos, we'll do um, take the same premise and then have an option where the user can choose what they want to see on there. So great. I hope this one helps and uh, look forward to the next one. Take care.